Hey gang, this is Eric White. Today is going to be a very geeky, detailed, technical screencast on how you determine what font is used for any specific run in an OpenXML word processing ML document. To start with, it's useful to point out that open XML parts are always encoded in UTF-8. Word does not include a byte order mark in all of these parts. Even though there's no byte order mark, rest assured they are still encoded in UTF-8. You can include a byte order mark when you write out parts to an OpenXML document. It's just not necessary. Therefore, if you are using Asian languages or right-to-left languages such as Hebrew or Arabic, you can just put your UTF characters right there in the OpenXML document and they will render properly. But there is a complication with determining the font information. Sometimes OpenXML developers need to extract the information from a word processing document and want to get out the font family, the font size, and such information. Maybe you are transforming your word processing ML document into a, another XML dialect and you need to or want to include font information in this other XML file. So how to determine that? Well, of course, I had to deal with this issue when I wrote the HTML converter. I wanted the HTML to render in the correct font, of course. Let's take a look at a document that has some English and Chinese characters in that document and do a little bit of exploration of word processing ML documents. Here I have a Chinese document. I'm dragging this document onto Visual Studio 2013 where I'm using the Open XML Package Editor Power Tool for Visual Studio. For more information on how to use this tool and where to get it, take a look at this screencast. Now let's go look at some markup. I'll open the main document part. I'll format the XML. And here we can see we have a paragraph. In that paragraph, we have a run that contains the text A, B, C. And we have another run that contains some Chinese text. So how do we determine what is the font for these runs? We don't see any font information here. We see this R fonts element with a hint with East Asia in there, but that doesn't tell us a whole lot. We can notice that this paragraph doesn't have any paragraph properties on it, so that means it's using the default style. Let's go look at the styles part and see what we see in there. I'll find the normal style. Here it is. By the way, there's nothing magical about the style name of normal. Instead, the default style is indicated by this attribute here, this w colon default equal one. That means that this is the default style for this document. Looking at this document, we can see that it has an R fonts element with East Asia equal to Microsoft Yahweh UI. Please excuse me if my pronunciation of that is very wrong. Let's look at the document itself. And what we see here is the font for this ABC is Georgia, yet the font for these Chinese characters is the Microsoft Yahweh UI. Where does that Georgia style name come from? Well, let's Go back into the styles part in this document and let's go look at the doc defaults. And in the doc defaults, we see these run properties with R fonts with attributes of ASCII theme equals minor H and C, East Asia theme equals minor East Asia, and so on. Well, this points to the theme part. So let's go to the theme part and take a look at it. 
and dropping down here in the theme part, we see the font scheme states that for Latin characters, the typeface is Georgia. So this is where that font family came from. When we look at this R fonts element back in the styles part, we see that there is a specification for four different font families. These font families could come from the theme part or they could be specified right here in the run properties. So we have four fonts specified. How do we determine which of these four fonts is applicable for any given run? The OpenXML standard states that the font used of these four parts is determined by the character in the run. So in other words, if there is a character within a given code block in the Unicode standard, then it uses one of these particular particular fonts. It, that's how we know which one of these fonts we use. If we go to the implementation notes for the OpenXML standard, it's in a document ms-oi29500.pdf. I'll explain how to find this PDF in just a minute. So there is an algorithm here that says if the run has CS element or the RTL element dropping down, we see ranges of characters for specific Unicode blocks. And then we see the rule by which these characters determine which of those four fonts are used. The implementer notes that I showed in that PDF are available on msdn.microsoft.com. If you go to the method determine font type from character, the comments above that method gives the link where you can find the implementer notes. Further, the comments tell us that we're going to find the specific notes that we're interested in here at section 2.1.87. If you follow this link, you'll come to this page. You can download a zip file with all of the PDF files right here. Looking inside of that zip file, you'll see lots of PDFs of implementer notes that contain really useful information. The one that we were looking at is this ms-oi29500.pdf. And in here we could page down and find section 2.1.87 R fonts. And here we find that specific note that I use to properly determine the font for any given run. Formatting assembler is a class in PowerTools for OpenXML that takes a document that has all kinds of styling information. It might have table styles. It might have paragraph styles. It might have character styles. It might have default information for the entire document. And it might have a theme. And what formatting assembler does is it collects all of that information and creates direct formatting on every paragraph and every run with the styling of that document. The the formatting assembler takes a paragraph with a given style name. It, it finds the style in the styles part. It might need to look at a base style. It might need to look at the document default styling. And it might need to jump out to the theme part to get that information. And what it does is it assembles all of that information and places it as direct formatting on the run. Of course, this is going to make a document that is somewhat larger and somewhat less usable, styles won't be used anymore in such a document. It's all just direct formatting. But there's an advantage to doing this. After doing this process, then the conversion from that document to HTML is just a straightforward transform. We can look at all of the paragraphs and all of the runs and we can find the styling as directly applied to those paragraphs and runs and then appropriately format the HTML and CSS so that we get what we want. 
in Power Tools for OpenXML version 3.1.06 and later, I have created a new commandlet, which is expand docx formatting. This commandlet is just a thin wrapper over the formatting assembler class, and it creates a new document per formatting assembler's algorithm. It's still a valid OpenXML document. You can open it and it'll look just the same. It just won't use any styles. Let's take a look at this in action. To get power tools for OpenXML version 3.1.06 or later, go to powertools.codeplex.com. Click on the downloads tab and you'll find it down here. For more information on how to install power tools for OpenXML version 3.1 or later, take a look at this screencast. The installation for power tools for OpenXML 3.1.06 will work just fine using that procedure. Here is our Chinese document. Let's look at it really quickly. Here we can see there is this ABC and there are these Chinese characters. I'll copy it and then I'll run the expand docx formatting on test.docx. Now let's look at test.docx in the OpenXML package editor power tool. I'll open up the main document part and format it. Formatting assembler has done is it's analyzed that run and it determined which of those Unicode code blocks each character falls in and then it annotates the run with that font name. So this means that after running a document through formatting assembler, we can figure out very easily what is the font for that particular run. If we drop down here and we see the run of Chinese characters, we can see that the font name is Microsoft Yahweh UI. One note in passing is that within the paragraph properties, we see these run properties. But this is not run properties for all of the text within that paragraph. This is used for two different things. This is used for the run properties of the paragraph mark if we show paragraph marks. So let me show you what that is if I open up my Chinese.docx. And if I turn on paragraph marks here, those run properties in the paragraph apply to this pilcrow mark right here. Further, if the paragraph has a list item, in other words, if the paragraph is part of a numbered list, the formatting of that list item on that numbered list in some cases comes from the run properties in the paragraph properties for that paragraph. So mainly if we are concerned about what font is being used for the runs in a paragraph, we have to look at the run properties for a run. It's only in very special cases that we need to look at the run properties for a paragraph. Now, you may have some source document where you have some content that you want to find out what is the font name used for that particular paragraph. And after running it through formatting assembler, it's going to be a completely new document. The question is, how do you establish correlation between your source document and all of the information that you can get out of formatting assembler? What you can do is you can add special attributes in an ignored namespace into your source document. And then without opening that document in Word, run that document through formatting assembler. You can either run it through formatting assembler using the C Sharp class, or you can run it through the expand docx formatting commandlet. It's all the same. It all uses the same code. And then that attribute that is in your special namespace, your ignored namespace, will carry through to the document as produced by formatting assembler. Let's run through that process so we can see what I mean by that. I'll copy that document again and call it test2. I'll go into the package editor power tool. 
First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to declare another namespace that is just for my own use. I'll give it a prefix of ZZ and some random namespace name. And then I'm going to add that ZZ into the MC ignorable attribute here. And this means that even after I get all done with this, I could open this document in Word and Word won't complain about that namespace because it's an ignorable namespace. Now I'll come to the paragraph and I'll add an attribute unique ID is equal to some number. We'll give it a number somewhat like a GUID. It doesn't really matter what this value is. You just want to use this value to establish correlation between your source document and the document after it's been processed by formatting assembler. I'll save it, close it. Now I'll expand docx formatting on test two and look at it in the OpenXML package editor power tool. Format the XML and we can see here our zz colon unique ID attribute. We can see the attributes in PT14 that contain the font name for this paragraph and for this run and for all the various runs in the paragraph and so on. So using this approach, you can annotate your source OpenXML XML document with unique identifiers. You can run the document through formatting assembler. You can then go into formatting assembler, look for your unique IDs, and thereby determine exactly what font is used for every run in the document. One thing that the observant will note is that in theory, a particular run could use two different fonts. So for instance, if I take this ABC out of this run and paste it in here, we now have characters in multiple Unicode code blocks in this single run. This run no longer up here has any text in it, so let's just delete the entire run. We can open up text two, and we find that in fact, Word properly processes that document it looks at every single character in every single run and determines what is the font to be used for that character. So here we see it's Microsoft Yahweh and here we see it's Georgia. Now Word will never do this. Word will never save out a run such that that run should be rendered in multiple fonts. It'll always break up runs such that each run will be rendered in a single font when it saves it. But according to the standard, you can have characters in multiple Unicode code blocks in a single run. If you need to be prepared for any circumstance such as other word processors that may or may not follow this convention, then you'll need to look at every single character in every single run. In the HTML converter and in formatting assembler, I took the shortcut of relying on the fact that Word will always create separate runs when there needs to be a different font for the rendering of that run. You could, of course, go through all of the work that I went through to implement formatting assembler and assemble all of that information from the styles part, from the default document properties, from the theme part. But I recommend that where possible, let formatting assembler do the heavy lifting for you. You can then in a very few lines of code determine what font is used for any given run. That's all I'm going to cover in this video. Come back often to openxmldeveloper.org and see the new content that we're always producing for OpenXML. You can follow OpenXML on Twitter at OpenXMLDev and you can follow me on Twitter at EricWhiteDev.